whether it is too soon to know for certain. But people who work in the pet rescue sector say they're noticing a jump in the number of dogs who've been adopted while people have been working from home. Animal behaviourist Dr Kate Mournment joins us now to talk about what will happen to new pets once we return to our regular work, school and socialising schedules. Good afternoon, terrific to have you join us. Social media is awash with pictures and stories of families adopting a pet in the past month or so. Do you believe pets have been helping people through the sudden isolation they've had to deal with because of the pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think pets have been a really great um, source of comfort uh, for people in this really strange time that we're all experiencing. Um, pets provide us with companionship, um, a sense of comfort and also a bit of a sense of routine. So uh, I think a lot of people are getting quite a bit from spending a bit more time with their pet. And so is, if I could describe it this way, hashtag ISOLIFE a good time to adopt a pet? Yeah, look, I think any time's a really good time to adopt a pet as long as it's been uh, a really well-considered decision and not something that people have done on a whim. And so, therefore... It's a win-win situation. Pets find homes and people's anxieties ease or are there concerns that pets get too, too comfortable with the, their families while they're at home and don't really uh, go anywhere else? Yeah, so uh, definitely it's win-win. Um, so there are lots of pets out there in animal shelters and rescue centres that need homes. Um, and pets can certainly help to ease the anxiety that a lot of people are feeling at the moment. So it is win-win. Um, but one of the biggest problems that people in my industry are anticipating uh, is that separation anxiety will become a big problem um, for pets, particularly dogs, once all these restrictions are eased. So at the moment, um, people are working from home, kids are being homeschooled, people can't really go anywhere, and so they tend to spend a lot of time with their pets, walking their dogs several times a day and um, spending a lot of time with them. So I think a lot of dogs particularly uh, will struggle once uh, restrictions are eased and people go back to work and school. And so what is the best way to avoid that and to make sure that anyone with a new dog, um, that that dog will be happy when their owner returns to work or school? Yeah, it's a really good question and it's something that people actually have control over. So um, the ability to cope with separation, it's something that dogs can learn and that they really need to be taught. So it's really important that for people who've just adopted a dog during this time or even people who already had a dog and have been spending a lot of time at home, that they try to prepare that dog for what life will be like once restrictions are lifted and people aren't as home as much. So some of the really effective things to do is to teach your dog that good things can happen when you're not necessarily right there. So things like feeding your dog outside or in another room, away from people, giving them long-lasting treats, um, toys that they can interact with on their own, those sorts of things can help the dog learn that being separated from you can be a positive thing. Owners don't always keep troublesome pets. Do you believe we could see some animals dumped on the other side of this period of self-isolation? Yeah, look, it, it's a possibility and hopefully it doesn't come to that. Um, I think the important thing to know for pet owners to know is that there's always a reason for behaviour. Um, it might just be that their dog is struggling to cope with the change, um, the sudden change in their routine where uh, the owners were home and now all of a sudden they're not. And I think for people to understand that there are people who can help them in this situation. You don't have to dump a dog at a shelter. You can get assistance. And if people are needing assistance with separation anxiety or they want to learn more about how to um, help their dog cope with separation, I, I'm, I've developed a resource for people. So they'll be able to download that off my website if they'd like to know more. It just in, it includes a lot more information than I'm able to give in an interview. Well, that is great advice. Dr Kate Mournman, thank you for speaking to us this afternoon. Thanks so much.